All right, let's talk about Evicted and Henchmen, two of my favorite episodes of Adventure Time from season one. Both of them, coincidentally, are also Marceline episodes. So let's talk about her introduction episode, Evicted. The vampires smash their skulls just for the fun of it. No way. Yes way, it did. Right at the start of the episode, we're already juggling multiple things at once. The story is going to introduce Marceline through this vampire story, but I like how it gives us a peek into Finn and Jake's dynamic as siblings. Finn in season one is like 12 and we're freaking him out and he's kind of like, I don't believe in this vampire story that you're telling, but also it's kind of getting to him. I saw someone outside the window. It must be the vampire. I made that story up. I was trying to scare you and it worked. So Jake comforts him and then when Jake gets scared, Finn comforts him back. It's lighthearted, it's charming, and it's some really good characterization that I didn't see a lot of in season one. I wasn't scared. You're a total wuss, man. <laughs> and now that we know that both of them are scared, it's time to introduce Marceline. This one frame shows so much about their early introductions together. She is a menace. Are you gonna smash my skull and read my blood mist? Calm down, weenies. I'm not gonna do that. So she is introduced as this character who is not harmful, but will 100% mess with him. And I specifically like how every time she uses certain supernatural abilities, we get what feels like a reversed piano sound. M for Marceline. So who is Marceline as a character? Well, she's an immortal vampire who's traveled all over the world and had countless experiences. Here's her showing some knickknacks she got to Finn and Jake. Oh, and check these out. <laughs> And following this scene, Marceline kicks Finn and Jake out of their own house, claiming, I was here first. But why? I think everything Marceline does in season one revolves around entertainment. She wants to be entertained. She doesn't pull those knickknacks out for herself. She's probably already seen them. She does it to show Finn and Jake. She's not even looking at the knickknacks. She's looking at Finn's reaction. When she shows them the knickknacks, she's deriving entertainment from their entertainment. When she evicts them, she is deriving entertainment from seeing what they would do, how they would react. And in turn, Finn and Jake realize they probably don't want to fight this, and they go looking for a new house. Bag us a new house! But I like our home! Finn, house hunting is wild! And we get to see a little bit of Finn and Jake's relationship. Jake tries to comfort and distract Finn from the fact that this kind of sucks. And so they go house hunting, and that also kind of sucks. Which again, is an opportunity to give us more information about their relationship. Seeing exactly how they would handle that situation. I want to go home! Home is anywhere where people care about you. I don't want to hear a lecture, dude. I just want to go home. And I think there's something really interesting about this dynamic where Jake could try to say something profound or interesting to try to change Finn's attitude. But at the end of the day, sometimes you don't want to hear a lecture. You just want things to go back to normal. Eventually, though, they do find a new place. Oh, uh, yeah. I know, too. Hey, Finn. <laughs> and that's right. Marceline's here, too. I like to think that she's just been flying, following them around this entire time, seeing what they're up to, specifically because they're a form of entertainment. And as soon as that entertainment is gone, she's here to poke the bear again. Then this cave belongs to me! This is just bullying behavior, and this time Finn's had enough, and he goes straight to fight Marceline. Now, does it work? No, but he tries, and he should have been a goner. Why didn't you just kill me? Because that was fun! I haven't fought like that in years. Thanks, Finn. And again, it all wraps back in this idea that the only reason why Finn was spared, the only reason why any of this happened was just because Marceline was bored and this gave her some form of entertainment. And with that introduction, let's talk about her second appearance in season one, Henchmen. I didn't catch this the first time, but we start off with Finn and Jake messing around only to find out that Marceline has been watching them the whole time, which maybe means that she did everything that we're about to see for the sole purpose of messing around with them. Someone needs our help! <laughs> henchman for life means henchman for life! Hey, cut that out! Oh, if it isn't my favorite little goody two-shoes, Finn. With what we're about to see later, it really makes me question just how much of this did she plan for? This again is really well characterized. We understand Finn as this noble heroic character willing to save innocent people, 
we already know Marceline as this like morally ambiguous character that's willing to mess around with people. And she saw a chance where Finn and Jake were nearby to use this as an opportunity to mess with them. When Finn and Jake show up, Marceline isn't shocked. She's like, ah, there they are. Look at that dubious smile. I'll see to it you get set free. Oh, and how are you gonna pull that off, hero? I'll do what I need to. I'll even take his place. And just like that, Marceline has found entertainment. My code of honor wouldn't allow it. <gasps> oh, my code of honor wouldn't allow it. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is a brilliant concept. A character with a strong morality having to follow a morally dubious character. The potential. It's there. I'm bound by my word. <laughs> It is such a strong Marceline episode. Up to this point, we've had maybe two villains, Magic Man and Ice King, both of which right now are underdeveloped and don't really have a unique perspective on life. Marceline, on the other hand, is almost exclusively driven by her immortality and desire for fun. Your first job as henchman is to help me feed. Sounds like dinner. Finn, open the door. And honestly, up to this point, we don't know what's gonna happen either. Unless you know more about Marceline, this can go in any direction. Mmm, that red bow tie was delicious. But what? You know I eat the color red sometimes. It's the fact that she's a wild card. The fact that, like, you have no idea what she's gonna do. The fact that we don't know whether she's like a villain or like a villain villain yet. And that no matter what she does, she derives pleasure from psychologically torturing Finn. She's just like, <laughs> she's just like gaslighting him. Throughout this entire episode, she summons the undead and charges into a kingdom. Except that it was all for a party and haha, -ha, we're just messing with you. I want you to take this dimple plan outside and kill it. <laughs> What? And even when you understand the gimmick, you still don't know the specifics of any given trick. You should have hacked it to pieces when it was still adorable. And that's kind of what I like about early Marceline. It takes effort to understand her as a character. This specific episode paints her as a character who's willing to mess around with people, but also not specifically out to harm people. She's more of a chaotic good type of character. I'm not falling for your junk anymore, lady. You just like saying poop that jacks with my brain. What are you talking about? I... <laughs> <laughs> Dang, man, I didn't think you'd ever catch on. When Finn finally catches on, Marceline drops the whole henchman thing. She's no longer entertained now that Finn knows the gimmick. The end. That's it. That's all I got to say about that for now. Eat the color red, not blood. Bye-bye. Hug me.